Welcome back to TV in Color. We're talking with Scandal writer Ramla Mohammed. Tell us, what does a writing room even look like? Oh, well, we have, yeah, some, some writers' rooms do have note cards. Um, we kind of have whiteboards, and it's really a group effort on our show, I will say. Um, you know, as far as just crafting an episode, like the writers, uh, you know, will pitch scenes or, you know, just character storylines, and then even sometimes dialogue. And uh, then, you know, once we have a script, we have a writer's table read where uh, the writers take on the parts, which we actually really get into. <laughs> we really get into it. And it's really awesome. Um, and then after the read, we kind of work on the script a little more. Um, the actors read it and then we shoot it. And the process is probably like 10 days, sometimes less. It's, wow. it's a very fast, fast process. Wow. That's some real insight right there. The fact that you had to, that you also act out and that you read out what you're writing. Yeah. In the room. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's helpful to hear the words out loud. And, you know, I think all of us want to, you know, be true to the words and not just kind of read them, you know, haphazardly, but really, you know, really get into it. As a woman of color, not to place more pressure on your shoulders, but is there pressure on your shoulders? No, actually. I mean, the. I must say, like, I don't, I don't feel those pressures necessarily. Like I said, you know, really the pressures that I feel are kind of pressures that any lower level writer would feel, which is, you know, am I talking too much? Am I not talking enough? Uh, is what I said very stupid? <laughs> you know, do they all secretly hate me? You know, those are, those are my own, like, writer neuroses that I have. Um, but I, it's, it's very fortunate because Olivia Pope, um, the character, is so well-developed and complex um, that no one looks at the black girl in the room to decide kind of what the black girl on the show would do. I think that's a luxury that probably other rooms might not have, but um, I'm fortunate to be in a place where, you know, my opinions are encouraged, they're not discouraged. Um, and of course, like, if there's a storyline or a character moment that rings false to me as a woman or a person of color, then I speak up. I think with our actors, like, you know, uh, they, just, they just bring the words to life so much and I think because they're so talented and they have such great range it, it inspires us to you know challenge them and to keep you know creating interesting stories because we know that they can deliver on the performances. Hmm. Yes you really do bring those actors to life with the words but then you also kill these actors <laughs> off too. I know, what, I what's know. going on? How, <laughs> how do you decide whether it's time to end a character to slice one off? I mean obviously winning an Emmy doesn't even guarantee that you're going to stay on the show but some people are you still know, reeling I'm, over I'm, that. I'm, I'm sad about James too. <laughs> I mean I, Dan Bukutinsky is such a great guy and he's a wonderful actor but at the same time you have to tell the best story. You have to tell a compelling story and and Cyrus's and James' relationship is so interesting, and what Cyrus has done, it was just like, that's going to be very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yes, I'm sad, but the, I, you know, I, like I said, I'm a fan of the show, so I also feel <laughs> the emotion as well. So let's get some tips for those of us who might want to break into the television industry, particularly within writing. What are some of the first steps that you did in order to activate this talent within you? You know, they, there's a saying that writers write, which seems very obvious, but um, I know it's very difficult. Like, I mean, I had a job that I worked 10 to 12 hours a day, and I just wanted to come home and kind of veg out and not do anything. Um, and I did do that for a while, but then I realized, I was like, oh, someone one day might say, I would love to read something you have, and I would hate to not have anything. I'd hate to throw that opportunity away. So... Um, I just decided after work, I'd stay an hour and write and work on my scripts and I would read scripts and I would watch, I started watching first seasons of TV shows just mm -hmm. to get an idea of the pilot and how the kind of first season panned out. And I just, I just, you know, did what I had done with other stuff. It just it kind of became a student of the television process. And um, I, I found it was very helpful. I, I think of some of the scripts I wrote back in grad school and they're horrendous. Um, <laughs> but I just kept writing. I would write another pilot or I'd write another spec. And um, when I was writing a spec, I'd go online and look at fan videos that people would make just so that I knew the show that I was specking. Or if it was a pilot, I really tried to break down my characters. Um, and then, you know, I was in a writer's group. So it's always helpful to have other people read, get notes, mm. be open to notes, be open to changing things. Um, Keeps you accountable making it too, better. Right? Yeah, yeah, and also because you might as well get used to it because in television, if you work on a show, you're going to get notes and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you have to be able to be open to that um, and get better. And that's something you can do, you know, just with a laptop and 
you know, some kind of screenwriting program. Maybe for Final Draft or something. Yeah, like that. or yeah. screenwriter, whatever, whatever it is. It's just, it's just, you know, making sure that you just write those samples and you know try to write a really good script. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Well, we've seen a season full of crazy scripts coming <laughs> from your writer's room over there. And so uh, perhaps it's time for a little bit of celebration. And, oh. Uh, so we snuck these glasses into oh. your home this evening. So <laughs> gladiators out there, you may recognize these. These glasses are from Crate and Barrel. They're the Camille glasses because they've oh. got these wild stems. So oh, yes. let's reach on back here oh. and uh, let's give a toast. May there be many more awesome seasons within our future with Scandal. So, oh, great. Yeah, this one's for y'all. You can do this also at Cheers. home. Cheers. And then also, you know what? Oh. Let's get some popcorn. Why not? Perfect combination. Right. The Olivia Pope special. She likes to keep it popping. All yeah. right. So here we go. <laughs> Cheers to you. Cheers.